I'm John Warnock, president of Adobe Systems, and I'd like to welcome you today to view a tape that we've prepared about Adobe Illustrator. This is a product that we are very, very excited about. It addresses the professional illustration market, and it has a lot of capabilities that you won't find in other programs. The tape is broken into two parts. The first portion is about a six-minute portion that will show a basic overview of the product. It will show you the various capabilities and features found in the program. The second part of the tape is a tutorial that takes you on a step-by-step -step process through the use of each of the basic tools. This tutorial should act as a foundation for you getting in and being able to use the product in yourself. But before we start, let me show you some of the great examples that some of our early customers have been able to prepare with this product. They show a wide variety of applications, a wide variety of techniques, and a wide variety of the art styles that can be prepared with Adobe Illustrator. Now that you've seen some of the great illustrations some of the early users have done with Illustrator, let me tell you how it basically works. The first thing you do is you prepare a drawing or a sketch of what you had in mind. You can either use a drawing that you've done or a drawing that you've gotten from somewhere else, a clip art file, a newspaper, a magazine. You use one of the scanners that's hooked to an Apple Macintosh. You scan the image into the Macintosh into a Mac Paint format. This image then acts as the background or base art upon which you construct the illustration. Let me show you how this works. This file has been previously done, and it's a picture of a girl's face. What we did is we scanned that picture of a girl's face in on a, on a scanner hooked to the Macintosh. And as you'll see when I show you what the original scanned image looks like, it has a lot of imperfections in it. There are very rough edges and there are a lot of scanning artifacts that make this an unprofessional looking kind of picture. The whole purpose of Adobe Illustrator is to fix this. We can zoom in on various parts of the picture and you can see outlines around the background. Those outlines have been put there previously. Now the nice thing about Illustrator is you can edit these outlines. So you can change curves, you can move points, you can change the direction of a curve at a given point by using the various editing facilities in Illustrator. I'm going to get rid of this outline and show you how outlines are drawn. The basic idea is a tracing model. We lay down curves around the background template, around the scanned image, and essentially outline with curves the eyebrow. This becomes second nature once you learn how to do this. After you've outlined the entire picture, you can see how it's going to look like, what it's going to look like when it's printed. And you can preview it, so to speak. Here, you can notice that the image is very clean. The lines are very smooth and crisp. One of the nice things about Illustrator is that you can sort of do both of those the same. I can create a window and make it a half a screen size.
Now I'm going to make a duplicate of that window and move it over to the other half of the screen. I'm going to zoom away on this side so I see more of the face. I will then preview that side to see what it's going to look like when it's printed. When I change the eyebrow and move the curves around, you can see that it, it's moving on both images and that you can see the preview changing as I move the curve. This is a very neat and powerful feature. If I select the eye, entire eye, I can move the eye around and sort of get a Picasso effect in the image. We can undo any operation with Illustrator by using the edit menu. We've seen just a few of the samples now of the kinds of things that you can work with in, on one specific image. Now that I've shown you how to manipulate and create a drawing using a background template, I'd like to show you how to create a drawing from scratch using the power tools that are found in the program. These power tools allow us to create art and manipulate it with a high degree of ease. Let's now open a new file. We will indicate that there is no background template. I'm going to use the circle tool to create an ellipse that's going to represent a petal of a flower. Using a rotation tool, I can rotate and duplicate that petal. And I can repeat the process to create a complete layer of petal. can select this whole group and rotate it again, creating a second layer of petal. Now, using the circle tool again, I can create the center of the flower. Selecting all of these, I can then paint them any shade of color, filling the centers and outlining them with any shade of gray for the lines. I can tilt the flower to look like it's being viewed from the side. And I can make a copy of it as though it were being passed through a mirror. And move that mirror image into place. Taking another copy, I can move it in front. Now I'll straighten it out to make it appear as though it's facing more head on. We've created a little clump of flower tops. Now let's build the stem. 